In this video, we're going to see how to lighten skin tones with Photoshop Elements. We'll see how to go from this to this. Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. Let's go over to Elements and get started. I'm using Photoshop Elements 2018 for this video, but it'll work the same in older versions as well. Let's start out by duplicating our background layer, and we can do that by pressing Command-J on a Mac, or it would be Control-J on a PC. And now we have a new duplicate layer called Layer 1 in our Layers panel. The next thing I'm going to do is go up to the Enhance menu and choose Adjust Lighting and Shadows Highlights by clicking on it and we get the Shadow Highlights dialog box. The preview is checked, so it's turned on, so you can see the significant difference it made. This is before, and that's after. That looks really good. This is the default setting. It automatically comes up as 35% lighter shadows. I'm gonna actually bring this one up a little bit more. So I'm just going to bring it up to 40%, and then I'll click OK to close the dialog box and accept our change. In our example, I want to keep everything as dark as it was except for this woman's face. So I can do that by using a layer mask. If I click on the Add Layer Mask icon at the top of the Layers panel, which I'll do now by clicking on it, we get a layer mask, but it's completely white, which means it's revealing everything that's on layer one. I want to start out by hiding everything that's on layer one, so I need a black layer mask. I could turn this one black, but I'm going to undo this add layer mask so I can show you another trick which is how to add a black layer mask, and that is when you click the Add a Layer Mask icon, if you hold down the Option key on a Mac, or it would be the Alt key on a PC, so I'll do that and then click on the Add Layer Mask icon. Now we get a black layer mask instead of a white one. Because it's black, it's hiding everything that's on layer one. So we can't see our lightened version at all. It's there, but the layer mask is hiding it because that layer is being hidden, all we can see is our background layer, which is our original darkened version. Now I just want to open up the face area to make that lighter, and to do that I'm going to use the brush tool. So I'll go over to the toolbox, and this is the brush tool here, so I'll click on it to make it active. What I do now is just look at my layer mask, and I see that it's black in the Layers panel, so I know if I paint with black, it's not going to do anything because it'll be black on black, so I know I need my foreground color to be white so I can paint with white. Mine is white. If it wasn't white, if it's black like that, you can change it to white by clicking this little double-headed curved arrow to switch the foreground background color. Now my foreground color is set to white, which means my brush will paint with white. And the other thing I want to do is make sure I use a soft-edged brush. I'm going to, down in the tool options, I'm going to click on this brush preview. And I'm going to change it to uh, the basic brushes, which are... Okay, if this comes up, just say don't save. In the brush preview, I change it to the basic brush set. And these are all just a series of standard hard edge brushes, like all these. They're just different sizes. It's the same kind of brush. And then at some point, we get into the soft edge brushes. That's what these are, and that's what I want. So I'm just going to double click on any one of these because, like I said, the only difference is the size. And I'm not going to adjust my size here. I'm going to use a different technique to do that. So. I'll just double click on this one here to close the preview box and to get that brush active. Okay, so now I'll move my cursor over onto my image and you can see the size of it. Now I want to make my brush a little bigger, probably about the size of her eyes in this case. And I can do that by pressing the right bracket key on my keyboard. There's the left bracket key, which makes your um, cursor smaller each time you press it, and the right bracket key makes it larger. These are the two keys that are right next to the letter P on your keyboard. So I'm going to press the right bracket key a couple times, and you can see each time I press it, my cursor gets a little bigger, and that's about a good size right there. We have our brush active, we're painting with white, and we have a soft-edged brush. 
just what we want. Now I'm going to start at her eye and I'll just click and drag. And what I'm doing is revealing that part of that layer by making that part of the layer mask white. So I'll just paint over that. When I was planning out this tutorial, I thought if I painted the whole face white, let me just show you. I thought the bottom part of her face almost got too light. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to change the strength or opacity of my paintbrush. And you can do that down in the tool options again. Instead of painting at 100% strength, I want to paint with 50% strength. Now I could drag the slider down to 50%, but you can see it's a little touchy. So let's put it back to 100. I can quickly change it to 50% by just pressing the number 5 on my keyboard. Watch when I do that. See, it changes to 50%. If I were to press 4, it would go to 40% and so on. But I want 50%, so I'm going to press number 5. And now at 50% strength, I'm going to paint over the bottom of her face. And that way it doesn't appear as bright. We can actually view our layer mask if you hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. As you do that, click on your layer mask thumbnail over in the Layers panel. So I'll do that now. And then over in the Active Image area, you can actually see what your layer mask looks like. So you can see the top part, which is where her eyes are. I painted with 100% white, and down on the bottom part of her face, I painted with 50% white which is kind of a gray. That's what we're doing. So I'm not completely opening up the bottom part of her face in this instance. Now I want to go back to my normal view. So I want to hide the layer mask and I can do that the same way that we viewed it, which is to hold down the Option or Alt key as you click right on the layer mask thumbnail. And now we're back to that view. Okay, so now her hair is still really dark next to her face and I just want to lighten that up a little bit at the top but I don't want to lighten it as much. I don't even want to lighten it 50%. I'm going to change the opacity of my brush again but this time just to 20%. So all I have to do is press the number 2 on my keyboard and the opacity goes to 20%. At that percentage I'm just going to click and drag over her hair and it just gets slightly brighter which is exactly what I want. And over here, I'm actually, because there's not as much hair, I'm going to make my brush a little smaller by pressing the left bracket key on my keyboard. And then I'll click and drag over this. So I clicked and dragged and it made a, a little lighter. I can, you can actually build up the opacity. I did it once, it's 20%. I can click and drag over that same area and now it's like 40%, and I could keep going to all the way to 100%, but this is as far as I want to go. Let's click on the eye for layer 1. If we click that off, we can see our original image, because now we're hiding our new layer. And then if I click on that eye again, we can see where we're at now. So there's before. And there's after. It's a pretty nice change. One thing that tends to happen when you use the um, shadows highlights feature is it did a good job of lightening up her eyes and the other areas of her face, but it tends to make it a little foggy looking or kind of uh, kind of dull looking. So I want to add a little more contrast to that. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make a selection from my layer mask. You can do that by holding down the Command key on a Mac, or it would be the Control key on a PC, and again, click right on the thumbnail of your layer mask, which I'll do now. And you can see by the marching ants, I have this weird looking selection, but it's a selection that is made to be exactly like my layer mask. With that done, I'm going to add an adjustment layer. So I'll click on this Create a New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon at the top of my layers panel. And when I do, you get the list of your different options. I want to choose brightness contrast. So I'll click on that. And when I do the brightness contrast dialog box appears, I'm just going to drag my contrast slider up. And I'll go all the way over to the right so you can see what's being affected. 
Remember just that area that we have selected, which is based on our layer mass. So I'm just going to bring that contrast up to about 40. Yep. So right there. And you can click on the eye in this dialog box to see your before and after. So there's before and there's after. One other thing I want to do is I want to clip this adjustment layer to my layer one. I can do that by clicking this little square down in the bottom left corner of my dialog box. And watch my brightness contrast uh, layer when I do that. So I'll click it and see how it shifted over and you can see that little square with the down arrow. That means that adjustment layer is only going to affect the layer right below it, which in this case is layer one. So let's click the eyeball off and on for our new contrast adjustment. And you can see it kind of took care of that hazy look. The other thing it did was it kind of shifted the color to more red, which might be okay in some instances, but I really don't like it in this case. What I'm going to do to eliminate that color shift is I'll change my blend mode from normal. This is at the top of the layers panel again. And if I click on normal, you get a list of all these different blend modes. And I'm going to choose luminosity way at the bottom. So I'll click on that. What it does is it still holds the contrast move that we made, but it eliminates that color shift. So we the color is maintained from what we had before, and it just adds the contrast which is what I want in this case. So there's the before and after. I'm really happy with this, so this is where I would leave it. I would save it at this point. We did a lot of different things. We used different opacity on our brush tool. We added this brightness contrast adjustment layer. You might not have to do any of that on your photos. I just wanted to show you some of the different options you can use. You might be happy with going in, duplicating your background layer, go up to the Enhance menu and choose Adjust Lighting and Shadows Highlights. Leave it at its default setting, say OK, and you're done, because that actually gave a pretty good result too. But that's up to you and up to the individual photo that you're working with. I'm going to leave it at that. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.